transfers this into different districts in a gradual manner so we can make the best use of such venues to benefit the public. Thank you. Mr. Gary Fan. Thank you. Madam Deputy, Mr. Ma proposes this debate on developing venues and creating room to support it. Well, I'd like to change it to developing many small venues and creating room for different kinds of creation. In my view, sports is just the same as arts and culture, and you have to think about different factors when you create venues. In 2002, the HAB released a review report on sports policy, and it mentioned three principles. One, popularization. Two, el elitism. And three, mega events. I believe you would then be more inclined towards elitism and pop mecca events like building Kitech sports complex. You are building mecca facilities, but they are not going to serve the public. In order to develop Hong Kong sports culture, you need to build more neighborhood sports facilities. Actually, in the year 2000, the then SHA, Mr. Lem Wen Kwong, mentioned another paper saying that there should be one sports per person and uh, I hope you will look back at that paper. Instead of providing mega venues, you should provide numerous smaller facilities in the districts to encourage Hong Kong people to do sports. Number two, shortage of venues. This is not an excuse for the administration not to develop arts, culture and sports because in the Hong Kong PSG, you have not updated the requirement for arts and culture and sports. Let us look at another important paper, 2030 plus. It is said that we need 4,800 hectares of land, but then you do not exactly mention arts and recreation. And also, if you look at resources, devoted for sports, community sports already took up over 80%, which is not a small percentage. But I believe you need more data in order to improve the planning standards for us and recreation facilities. Uh, that is mentioned by Ms. Tanya Chan, and that is you should look at people's preference and you should afresh the study of leisure habits and recreation preferences so that you will be assisted in developing community sports and so your resources would be put to the right um, choices. A few days ago, the CS4A, Mr. Matthew Cheung, described Hong Kong, uh, described the Bay Area as the new stage for Hong Kong's performance industry and, and he encouraged Hong Kong arts groups to perform in the Bay Area, and it is said that there is a growing demand for venues in Hong Kong, but in the Bay Area, there are many venues for performance and also big audiences in the different cities, and they would be complementary to Hong Kong. He painted a grand picture, and what he said was uh, coincidentally very much akin to Mr. Edward Lau's amendment, meaning that the Bay Area would be the end-all solution. Uh, including for the arts and culture industry in Hong Kong. But if you look at the players in these industries, you will see that there are many restrictions for developing arts in the Bay Area. Earlier this year, an alliance did a survey to collect views from the industry with regard to funding from the government, um, helping people to have exchanges in the Bay Area. And 80% of the respondents said that they just had no plans to take the career to the Bay Area. Some people said that they were worried that there would be political censorship and uh, that there would be restrictions on editorial and speech freedom. Mr. Cheung might mention cultural exchange in the Bay Area, but he might be just promoting the Bay Area in an all-out effort, but that is not something welcomed by the Hong Kong arts and recreation industry. Talking about censorship, I will take the opportunity to criticize the SAR government. We were talking about the hardware side, meaning venues, which of course would help 
the development of arts and culture, but let us also look at the software. If you ask the artists and participants in Hong Kong, they would say that a free creative space is important. But let us look at recent years. And government directed arts and culture, there was censorship in 2016. A Hong Kong group wanted to perform in Chin Wan, but the LCSD said uh, that in the pamphlets printed by the LCSD, the National University of Taiwan um, description was deleted because there was this word national in that name of the university, and then that is censorship. And then in 2017, the uh, in the 40th anniversary exhibition of the music office of the LCSD, two particular Taiwan newspapers had their names um, deleted from the um, newspapers because they mentioned Taiwan. And therefore, these are barriers to the development of arts and culture in Hong Kong, and the neo-democrats would like the administration not to interfere into such matters. What we should emphasize is that uh, we should look at promotion of arts and culture and in the community. Of course, the biggest failure in recent years is the Mong Kok pedestrian precinct. You have not managed the area, and the neo-democrats are of the view that you should review the management of public space in Hong Kong, and you should write a code for the users. You should allow street performers to continue playing there, and there must be integration with the community. I will reiterate again that you should provide numerous small venues and provide a free space for creativity. So I speak. Thank you. Mr. Xu Kachun. Thank you, Madam Deputy. At the beginning, I'd make a declaration of interest. I'm a director of a uh, black box theater company. As a uh, director of a theater company, I would thank him, Mr. Ma, for his original motion. On this motion, I met some uh, small theater groups, or let's say micro theater groups. I, I showed them the original motion to solicit their views. I thought that this op uh, the positive wording uh, would be most welcomed by these theater groups. And yet they have expressed dissatisfaction in the inter-school debate competition. There's a frequent topic of whether Hong Kong is a cultural desert. And Hong Kong has a diversified uh, perform performances and with strong international vision is uh, akin to European and America. Uh, we asked the secretaries to whether the, uh, Hong Kong is a cultural desert, they would strongly deny so. But is that the fact? The cultural desert uh, theory is not that Hong Kong lack of uh, cultural performances. It's referring to the government have uh, failed to provide the nutrients to, to preserve our culture. For whether Hong Kong is a cultural de desert is whether Hong Kong has the conditions to preserve and develop uh, performing arts. The Hong Kong performing arts will not require proactive uh, promotion by the government. The private sector, indeed, is private enough. Like Mr. Hu Xi said, how to become a good leader. He frequently said, as the best type of leaders, they should uh, pre pretend to be ignorant and pretend to be competent and adopt the competence of the public. And those who pretend to be capable or uh, intelligent are simply not the way of the leader. In terms of arts and culture development, government should not make so many gestures it to deal with a few core issues. First will be the problem of venues. The second is political censorship. The uh, flow of uh, performing arts venues to industrial district, the nine major art groups and the medium art performing groups 
have now we have, have a vibrant art scene. The nine major art scenes, and uh, we operating on a, a corporate basis to uh, meet the uh, market preferences and to perform in larger venues. Their medium performing groups will be on a second tier performing venues, while the small theaters. Will uh, only ex uh, exist in as uh, industrial buildings rely on the social media, and we're not able to sustain the operations without government support. And this uh, theater groups have their own audiences and coexist in harmony. So that is what I call a co-parity. However, with the um, ineffective venue policy and it unreasonable um, our governance, they will like to imbalance and our big led to vicious competition among different theater groups to uh, secure venues and audiences. The different art groups have uh, attention amidst them. The revitalizing industrial building scheme launched by the government, the intent was to promote arts development and the growth of creative industries. And what does the hidden agenda ep episode told us? So uh, it's been operation since 2009 in Kunchong has was being crowned as the best performing venues and yet been um, subject to race and various uh, administration sanction by the administration, including performance being denied visa to Hong Kong. And in a particular, so it closed down after uh, performing its last concert. The history of the hidden agenda demonstrated the history of the venue performing history in Hong Kong. This is a neoliberalism policy in force that um all that uh, for everything could be done for profit and as well as, as for the sake of maintaining the high land premium policy. And the like, administration have a strange control of the industrial building despite concessions for the performing groups. And um and uh, we should be with that, uh, industrial and commercial use uh, due to fire safety concerns. They would allow the performing groups to attract uh, uh, audiences and uh, would need to require them to move their performances to proper venues. So, a lot of the smaller venues will uh, be the siblings of the future art scene and be regarded as unwelcome. Behind this will be uh, the uh, bureaucracy red taped on the sake of safety. And say, uh, the LCST has uh, 16 public uh, venues with 70% uh, of the applications are denied. Despite sufficient subsidy, they were not able to get a time slot. And uh, for the priority for the new theater groups are meant to assist in these new theater groups to reduce their uh, uh, entry barrier with how for uh, the experienced art groups can only change the names of, to uh, hire the under uh, a name a, a new name in the 2009 the uh, venue partnerships program and yet there are a lot of restrictions imposed on them with uh, little available venues it will have little room for them to place their props and for this and uh, bureaucracy any modification require a uh, reporting and a lot of uh, volunteer requirement and with severe administrative burden and the short-term cooperation will not allow the medium theater groups enough room for development. And for the 55 million allocation in the budget for my theater group, oh, so 55 million of allocation, how much you get to my theater group? Also about a 39,000 subsidy for, for two years. President, on arts and culture, before I need to developing venues and creating room, Uh, the Japanese experts said that um, the arts scientists should uh, stand in the sign of the privilege to create a great story as for well, um, to reflect the neglect on the uh, more people so submit Mr. Charles Mark thank you Mr. Mafung Kwok's original motion and the members who moved the amendments to allow us the, op the opportunity to uh, speak on this uh, largely uncontroversial bill it's just a matter where the government uh, is willing uh, to do so. Uh, Mr. Ma's motion also mentioned the use of industrial buildings as well and the policy on revitalizing industrial buildings. Recently, um, um, 
a press media inquiry that besides the arts and culture and recreation and sports, um, um, who, which bureau had the um, had the ambit to oversee the esports? Is it the uh, ITB or is it the CETB? Or if it's sports related, then it should fall under the HAB. So for the industrial buildings, um, they have a training and center and raising venues. So are these um, legal use? So, like a lot of members have pointed out, once you uh, kick them out, uh, you will not able to uh, tackle the issue. And um, and this industrial building is still not able to meet the most pertinent needs of society. So I like to offer a proposal for the government that development bureau should already be aware that a data center would uh, make use of industrial buildings. Today we're not talking about them. The uh, C, the uh, chief of information office have uh, have a data center facilitation unit. So if any issue pops, for example, uh, fire safety or um, planning, or whether the planning department will allow such a, a modifying the layout. So they actually uh, government assistance. So why the LCSD and the HAB can offer similar kind of services to our arts and culture, recreation, and sports group. So you should help to solve their problems. And in Instead of just telling you whether it is illegal or not, that's not your way to tackle problems. I think the department is capable of choosing this. Why can't the LCSC and AGB uh, take up the initiative? And Mr. Olokhin's amendment mentioned they uh, need to uh, set up uh, international racing venues of the international standards to uh, allow them to have uh, um, athletes of practice to enhance their. Um, standards. As we can see, that the Iceland um, entered tie with Argentina in the World Cup, so we all heard about this story. They only have over a uh, thirty three hundred thirty thousand population, which is the same population of Sam Shui Po. And back in twenty ten, so when it's at the ranking and FIFA over a hundred, and now they are on number twenty two. So it's just the population of the some ship. Of course, you can say that the Iceland uh, and there is a uh, big, stronger build. So from 2000 to now, they have built uh, 15 football houses and 120 proper soccer pitch and 100 smaller scale venues. They're all uh, public run so that um, the citizens have en enough venues. Besides the venues, like the uh, innovation technology, we need to groom the talent as well. Over this uh, 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 dozen years or so, they've been training uh, soccer coaches over 180 FIFA Grade A coaches, over 200 uh, FIFA uh, UFA charges. So for every 600 people, there will be a um, European Cup uh, Grade coaches. So you can tell us that uh, how far we are from entering the World Cup Finals. Do we have the determination, the talent, and the hardware? We're not asking uh, to squeeze all these into uh, the Sun Shui Po, but at least for the whole of Hong Kong, can we have over a dozen less both indoor and outdoor uh, soccer parties that for the, open to the public? Instead of having so many restrictions on hiring these venues, On the uh, a review of the booking procedure for recreation sports facilities, the venue touting activities have been criticized for, for use, and the LCSC will continue uh, to uh, revamp the bo uh, booking system. And in the oral uh, question, I wonder is it done by Mr. Kwang Chun Yu on the uh, booking system? Why is it uh, the uh, Se Secretary for Innovation Technology uh, being the uh, re re replying officer? I thought at, at most that ITB should be responsible for issuing a tender. It should under the policy area of the 
uh, it should be. So how would the IT be able to answer the question? But I remember in reply that uh, it's two years away from the booking from the uh, contract expiry. If this plagued by so many problems, why do we have to wait for two years? It should be replaced right away. So that is the kind of bureaucratism. So it's lagging behind and still asking the public to wait. If we know any problems, you don't have to wait uh, for the uh, system to complete to uh, run out its shelf life. And Ms. Chen Chen also mentioned the um, the uh, study of leisure habits and recreation preferences. It was done in 1995. That was, and Hong Kong's people's habit have uh, come a long way since then. It was too relying on such an antiquated research data for policy making. It's simply embarrassment. And the government in claiming that you know, all this are, are big data platform, and yet um, is not able to walk the talk. How could convince the Hong Kong people that you could it really achieve that? I do support Ms. Chen Chen's recommendation, and so submit. Mr. White, Roy Kwong. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First of all, I thank Mr. Ma Fong Kwok for moving this motion. This motion is on developing venues and creating room for local culture, arts, uh, recreation and sports development because this is actually missing in Hong Kong. Well, I think Secretary would have heard that over the past six months, I myself, together with uh, some cultural organizations and my team, have been trying our best to look for um, venues. We try to look for venues, but We have no alternative because we have no room because of your policies. Recently, I attended a ceremony regarding table tennis. They have been trying to survive for so many years. And there are a lot of young people joining their organization. Uh, however, they encounter difficulties because they uh, have been driven away from industrial buildings. And as long as they take up um, the space in an industrial building, very soon they'll be driven away again. And a civic organization then put forward a proposal um, to suggest using vacant school premises in Hong Kong and uh, it shows that very often we have idle school premises, vacant school premises not being used. So how can we make good use of um, our land? This year, there is a policy to revitalize vacant and idle school premises. And first of all, I thank the colleagues in the uh, Development Bureau, I visited some of the premises, and as I mentioned in my previous speeches, um, there is actually a site in Wan Chai in such a built-up area. We have uh, such a space, which is also the inspiration of um, the uh, novel uh, written by Gai Hong. And then, in fact, uh, in civic organization uh, occupied the space, and then they moved out, and because of the slope, uh, the space is very difficult uh, for users. So is it possible to make use of the fund as mentioned in the budget uh, to revitalize the place? In Taiwan, we have different uh, zones, but in Hong Kong, we do not have a cultural zone for the creative industries. But in fact, we do have the gems, uh, hidden, the diamond in the rough. And I emphasize that, of course, using vacant school premises is not the ideal solution. But when we're running out of space, we need to come up with uh, solutions. 
and Mr. Lao Kuang Hua, uh, Secretary, I believe that uh, if a civic organization would like to have a meeting with you to discuss the relevant matter, you wouldn't say no, because we have been trying our very best for a long time. Is there a way to finally make it happen? And that is to make use, use of uh, such uh, spaces, because we used to um, scale uh, well, we used to um, um, had our golden days. We uh, had a lot of celebrities, and we also had different uh, literary works and performances. But in 2018, we are in such a state that we cannot even afford to give them space. So, what is wrong with our policy? Well, so some people say the situation isn't really that bad in industrial buildings because art studio is already under column one of the permitted uses and the artists could undertake creative work there but in fact this is uh, wrong planning because um, uh, industrial buildings uh, not applying for the wholesale conversion or would need to apply for um, a short term waiver one or two years before conversion, but the threshold is so high that over the past three years we have uh, we saw only one application and not even one is successful and according to the electrical paper, the lands department does not keep statistics on the short term waivers or um, applications of industrial buildings and uh, these uh, applications usually have to do with a variety of uses, including arts and culture. So that means the government doesn't even have statistics on the use of industrial buildings. And this is really a deterrence because for 1,200 square meters, the uh, um, the uh, uh, if the if if the charge is not waived, then um, it uh, amounts to uh, seven hundred and eighty thousand. So it's really not palatable. The problem we face now is that, according to the Hong Kong PSG, there was a question on whether um, an arts and performance venue should exist would depend on the Home Affairs Bureau's assessment. I'd like to appeal to um, Mr. Lau Kuang Hua that uh, we should make it happen. Um, and we're just one step away from it. We have this uh, fund for revitalizing vacant school premises. We hope to create the first space for um, artists and performers who have not been able to find space for them to um, undertake creative work inside. We need to make much effort and we need the cooperation of different parties. The Development Bureau helped us um, during a number of visits. We checked uh, out a number of uh, vacant school premises. We understand that uh, each um, site is uh, uh, each site takes effort. We believe that if the government is committed, this could very well happen this year. I hope that the government would uh, step up its efforts. I so submit, Ms. Alice Mack, Madam Deputy. In recent years, public policy discussion would always focus on uh, land. Uh, everything has to do with land. And if we're short of land, we can just sit on our hands. It's just like uh, the uh, only focus that we have, because uh, land shortage is an inherent problem of Hong Kong. As we learn uh, in school, we have a lot of uh, we have a t hilly terrain with limited land in Hong Kong, but. Uh, is it really the excuse for the uh, policy chief, uh, bureau chief to suggest that uh, everything has to do with the land problem? Well, the focus of today's motion uh, is culture, arts, recreation, and sports. And I'd like to give this example today. That is uh, dragon dance as a kind of sport. I think this shows two issues. I see the Secretary for Development is here. The first problem is land, the second problem is policy, and the Secretary for Home Affairs is here as well. For lion dance and dragon dance, 
well, uh, usually we see such activities taking place uh, when we have uh, ceremonies in villages, uh, opening ceremonies of shops, and for example, Taihang Dragon Dance is uh, really a uh, cultural heritage activity. But apart from uh, these occasions, this uh, this sport is also something that uh, we can excel in the global arena. In in April 2016, uh, the government uh, published the first UNESCO checklist, and line dance and dragon dance have been listed uh, uh, have been put on the list. It shows that um, uh, the uh, sport uh, is acknowledged uh, worldwide in terms of its fair value. And dragon dance and lion dance, um, it, as far as that is concerned, we do excel. We have uh, a team in Hong Kong on a number of occasions. They have taken part in international competitions. And in 2007 and 2009, they won the Asian Indoor Games. And the government also issued an appreciation letter to uh, commend these, uh, uh, the, the team. However, Two days after receiving a commendation letter from the government, they received another letter from the Lands Department urging them not to um, practice uh, on the premises they were using. So we do have sports um, in which we have uh, we perform quite well, but they have been neglected by the government. Uh, on many occasions, we see line dance teams having to practice under the flyover or in the narrow pathways in villages or on the roadsides because of lack of space. Very often they would be uh, driven away as well. Like I said, right after receiving a commendation letter from the government, the team that would uh, uh, then received a letter from the Lands Department um, about uh, causing obstruction in the public place. Why can't we find suitable space for them for the purpose of training? Well, the uh, line dance one uh, team once tried to uh, hire a venue from the LCSD um, without success because it is said that uh, that equipment uh, would damage the flooring of the venue. Um, in the past, at the special finance committee meeting, I asked the government what measure uh, there is to help line dance teams to find suitable practice venues. The answer is that there is a dedicated venue for the line and dragon dance uh, organization to practice. As for individual uh, organizations, based on their individual needs, they can hire venues from the LCSD for the purpose of practice. So does it mean that only the uh, proper delegation uh, would uh, be uh, would be looked after by the government, whereas for uh, civic uh, associations and clubs, they would uh, need to um, survive on their own. Apart from venues, line and dragon dance spots have all long been uh, the subject of discrimination. According to them, before a performance, they would need to apply for a permit or license from the police because according to the summary offense ordinance, uh, a well, any individual or organization that uh, takes part in or organizes a line or track and dance must uh, apply for a permit uh, or else it would be a breach of the law. So that means uh, a license will be or a permit will be required. Because of this historical reason, line and track and dance is also discriminated against as far as our policy is concerned. How, how should we develop, uh, help develop the, the sport? Several years ago, the Home Affairs Bureau uh, created the post of a sports commissioner. So what does this sports commissioner do? Does he only help these, um, the, uh, the Hong Kong delegates in international competitions? What about others? Uh, don't they deserve support? I hope the government would actively respond to the issues I raise and review the policy so that a, a proper support should, can be given uh, to promote the development of lion and uh, dragon dance. And in particular, Home Affairs Bureau in charge of this pair of view should provide more support to lion and dragon dance 
teams, for example, uh, matching venues and um, helping these teams in hiring uh, vacant school premises. And um, on behalf of these organizations, the Bureau can liaise with the Security Bureau on reviewing the licensing arrangement or even scrapping the whole licensing arrangement so that this type of sport can really um, develop and excel in the community without uh, facing discrimination. I so submit. Mr. Raymond Chen. Mr. Wolfgang Kwok uh, proposes developing venues and creating room to support the development of local culture, arts, recreation and sports. I'd like to focus uh, my attention on the uh, lack of performing venues um, for Hong Kong. Is the Hong Kong government uh, in support of um, this development? We have the Hong Kong Coliseum in Hong Kong, which is um, the largest venue. If um, four sides are opened, uh, there is a capacity of 13,000. But we have to bear in mind that the Hong Kong Coliseum was built uh, in 1993. 35 years on, we have not um, any new venue that is provided by the government. We have the Hong Kong Stadium uh, rebuilt in 1994 with a capacity of 40,000. The government intended that the um, concerts be held um, at Hong Kong Coliseum, but, but it was stopped because of the noise disturbance. There were a number of um, singers um, that had uh, small-scale uh, concerts. Um, the LCSD devoted um, millions and millions of dollars to improve the sound system. I think it was um, in 2007, Sam Hui had the concert there and um, no more thereafter. I um, I attended um, the concerts at Coliseum. I uh, saw uh, Chung King Hin's um, concert in May. I saw um, Gigi Leung. It was packed to the gills. Uh, the last time she had it uh, was seven years ago. She didn't expect it um, to to um, put it put it off. Now um, there was a show that was um, rescheduled, and it was moved to. Um, the airport and Chi Chi Leung and Liu Ku managed to have the concerts there at um, the Hong Kong Coliseum. These are top notch singers and the most uh, popular singers, and they have to compete um, for the schedules. They have to wait for four years at least. Uh, it is only when someone um, vacates um, the, the uh, venue that they would be able to, to book the venue. There is a shortage of venues. Is the government is uh, committed to supporting um, the performing venues? The WKCD has set aside a piece of land for large-scale performances. But I'm sure that uh, you know how the story unfolds. Carrie Lam snatched the site uh, for the Hong Kong Palace Museum. The WKCDA said that no, it, the um, performing venue has been um, done away with. It's got nothing to do with the Palace Museum. The fact remains that the community has been discussing this for a long time. The industry would like to have a performing venue at the heart of um, Kowloon. But it was um, crowded out uh, by the Hong Kong Palace Museum. I think the government has uh, given the needs of um, the the uh, arts community a short shrift. There is an alliance that suggested that in the urban area there should be a venue uh, with a capacity of uh, 10,000 to promote um, concert tourism. When it comes to uh, concert tourism, I must say that Hong Kong is suited to developing this Industry. I think we should have uh, Mr. Edward Yao, the Secretary for uh, Commerce um, and Economic Development here. The May uh, Flower uh, Show uh, was moved to um, um, the airport and the AWE and the Disneyland also benefited from it. At a panel meeting, um, the Under Secretary uh, for Home Affairs 
uh, said that uh, at the Bay Area we can have uh, something like they call it Xi'an. And mainland um, visitors enjoy coming for the shows in Hong Kong at the Coliseum because it is cheap, it is convenient, it is accessible, the vibes are good, and in the mainland of China they have larger stadium where they they only look at um, the the monitor screen. Um, Jackie Lun uh, had the concert, um, and the um, tickets are selling like hot cakes. And there are so many people from outside of Hong Kong um, coming here. The Coliseum is a wonderful venue. We, you may have um, the AWE, you may have the uh, Convention Exhibition Center. But people still feel that um, the Hong Kong Coliseum is um, so good. For 35 years, we don't have um, another Coliseum. We're falling behind uh, Taipei, Seoul, and Singapore. And we're falling so much behind because of um, a lack of facilities. And we are turning away at the potential. And we have uh, lost about 200 concerts uh, to the tune of one billion dollars a May day, um, they have um, six uh, concerts, and you have to buy the fluorescent um, tubes, and and you have to pay one hundred and twenty dollars uh, for the fluorescents um, as part of the show. And this motion is about how we take full advantage of the vacant sites, uh, May day. Um, I mean, nobody would go away, um, even even because of inclement weather. For the phase two of uh, digital land, there is a, a site um, lying vacant there. If um, we can um, take advantage of the site uh, for the May Day show, it would be a good idea. A lot of the sites are not put to to effective use, and I think the cultural activities and performances we can use on the temporary site. We can set up um, um, the the um, marquees and have the show staged there. Please um, do not talk about the Bay Area in future. At the moment, we don't even have um, the venues in in Hong Kong for the performances to be staged here. I hope that this will be um, of concern to member to uh, the government, Mr. Jeffrey Lam. The World Cup has uh, lured uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of visitors to Moscow, and soccer fans uh, can tune in uh, to these um, events on TV. The Moscow's um, image has been spruced up, and this is also bringing benefits to the economy. Hong Kong is an international city. I think we ought to organize more mega events. Uh, to bring about a more impetus to our economy. But Hong Kong has a scarcity of land. It's, it's not as if Hong Kong doesn't have land, but we do face um, many constraints. Some said that um, the land should be taken advantage of for PRH. And at this rate of development, and given the mindset, the art and culture and sporting um, sectors would face tremendous difficulties. Hong Kong was labelled as a cultural desert, and we said that there is a lack of uh, venues for uh, for sports. We do want Hong Kong to become a livable city. Of course, the development of the economy would give people a decent life and give people decent work. But at the same time, we have to improve the quality of life. We need uh, somewhere to, to live, to work, and to enjoy leisure activities. If we want to go to a movie, a concert, if we want to play um, some board games with um, our friends, all these uh, would need space. Where is space going to come from? We proposed that um, reclamation takes, takes place um, outside of Victoria Harbour. We should. Uh, we propose that um, development should take place at the fringe of the country park, and we propose that um, the plot ratio be increased, and we propose that um, 
we should cooperate with the private sector in developing land. It's easier said than done. There are many dissenting voices and people are politicizing the issues and they are trying to obstruct um, the, the development and, and make um, all these sites and make sure these sites are turned into a PRH. When the Kai Tech uh, Sports Park um, was here for funding, we all remember the difficulties. When Hong Kong was trying to apply uh, for um, to become the venue for Asian Games, we did have a lot of um, difficulties. This motion is about developing venues and creating room. Um, when we have uh, venues for exhibitions and sporting events, we do encounter tremendous difficulties. We have to consult, consult and consult, and the land is lying vacant. We're not sure how soon the land would become available for the performing or for the uh, sporting venues. Other than the large groups um, that require land, we also need the land to become available for the small time artists so that they can um, develop um, their own expertise. If we want to enrich Hong Kong culturally, if we want to um, foster um, the habit of um, doing exercises, we need land. And if we can um, modify the policy, then we would be able to have land available for the development of uh, arts and culture and sports in Hong Kong. The Honourable Claudia Mo. This motion and all the amendments are harmless and positive, but we have to be aware of the uh, possible apparent foibles and pretentiousness contained. We're talking about art and sports developments, but let's look at our education arena to start with. Both the government, the Education Bureau, and many of our parents would seem to take uh, this attitude, having this state of mind that all learning, as far as uh, uh, our children are concerned, should be academic, cognitive. Look at how the Education Bureau insists it's so adamant that this TSA test for our primary three kids must be maintained. I just took uh, uh, that, uh, the latest English TSA test for kids. It's exhausting. Even for my age, for people at my age, it took me a solid 10 minutes. Ms. Claudia Mo, what has TSA to do with this debate? First line of the TSA business, I was trying to say, if we do not open up our minds about art and sports learning on the part of the children, motions like this, discussions like this, could be just all puff. It would be meaningless because the children wouldn't have a chance to start to exercise if they've got any. Their artistic or sports talent from a very early age. And our education bureau doesn't help this, does it? And I've heard my colleagues talking about uh, the chief secretary boasting uh, the uh, Greater Bay Area as the new stage for Hong Kong performers. Aha. Uh -huh. The last time I checked, I haven't found many local artists uh, showing uh, enthusiasm to want to perform on the other side of the 
border. But then, of course, you're trying to make Hong Kong and the mainland borderless. It sounds so forced. And of course, uh, on the political front, it would mean uh, quicker assimilation, faster integration, and a faster loss of the Hong Kong identity. But then, very often, time and again, we've heard uh, how the authorities, i.e. the government departments, exercise political censorship in order to uh, achieve political correctness in our artistic performances, exhibitions, and uh, other artistic expressions. The Mong Kok pedestrian zone, indeed, is a, a very good and the latest example. It used to be the heaven and haven for local performers, including spontaneous uh, expressions of uh, artistic or not artistic value, value kind of uh, uh, displays. But then the government departments, I don't know exactly who's in charge. They allow, they would allow that area to conduct loud hailer matches. You're loud, I'm louder than you, to the point that the noise pollution level has become so unthinkable to uh, residents in the neighborhood. And now people are saying, oh, let's scrap uh, that uh, performance precinct. And others would uh, suggest that let's have a licensing system for the performers. Now with the, uh, that uh, political correctness background, who would have enough trust or confidence in this so-called proposed licensing system. The Falun Gong, to start with, will never get a license to display their uh, exhibition stand. Of course you would say, oh, that, that doesn't seem to be artistic, but doesn't matter. Who decides what is artistic? It's a f what we're talking about, freedom of expression. That's it. And of course, I'm not trying to sound all negative about this motion. We need to start with something. We need to have motions of the kind as an advocacy, a call to uh, start uh, the ball rolling. But then against uh, the sort of background I was uh, describing just now, we need to be, uh, put, uh, to be put on the alert we need to be aware that art and sports and political correctness and cronyism, nepotism, political favoritism wouldn't just be rolled into one in Hong Kong. The West Kowloon Cultural District, fine talking about culture and things, but then it comes with this spending culture it signifies this uh, mentality of the government. Money no object, sky's the limit. Spend as much as we can for political nepotism. Now let's, let, let, let us just all help ensure that our artistic and sport developments will not prove nothing but puff. Zhao Ding Yu. Mr. Ho Den Chow. Thank you, President. I'd like to thank Mr. Ma Fong Kwok for moving this motion on developing venues and creating room to support the development of local culture, arts, recreation and sports so that we can have this debate in, Hong, in the Legislative Council. Talking about this, we really need to chase up the administration for um, results and delivery. Whether at the Council here or at the District Council level, we can see that many projects left behind by the municipal councils 
have been um, hanging in the air and have not been realized. I can see that this term of government is doing some kind of work, but I can cite some examples. According to Oriental Daily News, on the 8th of August 2016, well, this is, a, of course, two years ago. At that time, the calculations done by the daily was that there were 52 uh, cultural and arts projects which have not been delivered. Many of those were left behind by the municipal councils. Recently, at the council here, uh, Mr. Gary Chen and myself showed concern to what's area 6 of Taipo, where there is an open space. We welcome the fact that um, some arrangements have been made and it has been supported by the Legislative Council. But we hope that the administration will know that apart from delivering on Area 6, you should also be aware of Area 33 of Taipo, which was supposed to be turned into a soccer and rugby pitch with artificial turf. I hope you will quicken your space in delivering that project. Very often, projects left behind by the municipal councils are already receiving attention, but I don't know whether we can have better coordination on the department's level. These are projects which have received consensus at district councils, and yet they have not been embarked upon. Therefore, I'd like to um, talk to the administration about this. Second point, sports development in Hong Kong and how that relates to venues. Kaitek Sports Complex has seen a start, so we will have this major sports facility in future. I am always of the view that we need such a mega venue. Let us look at rugby. Well, I played rugby, rugby in the past, and my experience tells me that, uh, um, of course, we have been extremely successful with um, rugby sevens. And if you talk to rugby, rugby players, they will tell you that given the Kaitech Sports Complex, we will be able to stage rugby 15 instead of rugby 7s. And that would be, of course, an international match. I therefore think that it's important to have venues if you want to develop sports. But uh, as always, I would advance this viewpoint. I hope that the administration will remember that you don't turn Kitech Sports Complex into a concert venue in the name of sports development. Why am I saying this? It's because I know you need to generate profits for the operation of the complex. But I hope you will do your supervision. Concerts will bring in hard currency, but you must understand that Kitech Sports Complex is there to promote sports. Some sports may just be at the incubation stage in Hong Kong, and you might need to spend money on cultivating them. And Kai Tech Sports Complex would be the way to do it. Therefore, I hope it will not be used for concerts most of the time and for you to forget the original intent of having Kai Tech Sports Complex, which is to promote sports. Last point, President, vacant school premises and using them for recreation. We've heard that the ethnic minorities would like to look for venues for gathering and for cultural activities, and it has been difficult for them to identify such venues. In the new territories, there are many ethnic minorities living there. If the government and schools can cooperate, 
and open up schools on holidays and after school hours. So ethnic minorities can have a venue for cultural activities. This will allow them to have some space to use. I think this is something you should think about. I'd like to again ask the administration to think about this proposal. So I speak. Thank you. Dr. Chen Chong Tai. Before I begin my speech, I'd make a declaration of interest. In the upcoming book fair, I will publish a book on uh, sports research. Um, the um, study on uh, athletes and uh, Hong Kong's identity. So I will uh, probably refer to some passages in the book. So become an athlete in Hong Kong. In today's uh, motion, uh, we can uh, dissect in different directions and come up with different policy proposals. What if for uh, different uh, political parties and organizations would devote their own effort, however, um, to understand uh, thoroughly the challenges faced by the athletes, including and uh, their uh, own entire lifespan as an athlete, as well as the uh, ups and downs in their sports career, we have to uh, take it from the academic point of view. Mm. Why, um, in naming the title of the book, that I'll, I'll have this. Uh, Use at uh, uh, extraordinary athletes, so they are indeed outstanding athletes, and in our interviewees um, have won international accolades with lots of honors. However, I will not uh, list out their names one by one, but at least I would let you know that uh, we cover a. Uh, as soccer and fencing, squash, uh, rope jumping, skateboarding, uh, roller skating, ice hockey, and mixed martial arts, or uh, Pansai Taekwondo. So these are the existing sports categories. However, uh, when talking about developing venues and creating room to support sports, we only consider the large-scale sports venues. So for the uh, room, we create, talk about physical space. In my study, I point out that the space they need is more beyond the physical. Or uh, they will need a space for survival and cultural space. This by being so outstanding, so from our lifestyle that we regarded as out of the mainstream, well, it might sound as nice in English, they will be labeled as deviant. They're probably not doing too well academically, huh? For um, they're not able to uh, finish their college studies, or they may not be able to um, get a regular line of work from a 9 to 5 positions, despite their persistence, even their civil servants didn't to get up at 45 in the morning uh, to practice for the marathon. So this is the lifestyle of a Hong Kong athlete, and this is a um, strange phenomenon in Hong Kong society uh, to become an outstanding athlete um, to have to act as a deviance in Hong Kong. Their lifestyle is not probably not um, recommended by the uh, parents. So learning sport in order to uh, bolster their resume is so, and their cultural identities. A lot of the members mentioned that the government should support support and foster the local culture and, and art sector. So uh, it seems that the government has the opposite of the media's touch. Um, and the, 
the revitalization of industrial building to revitalization of uh, antiquated buildings. Uh, for example, um, the hidden agenda episode that um, is not talking about that how much money uh, we put on the venue, the equivalent of government supporting the cultural development. That's a distorted concept. In the past three decades, why uh, with the cultural scene turned to a corner? So uh, you have either can go to a city hall. On the other hand, we also have the um, arts at a civilian level. For the past decade or so, we mixed up uh, culture as being like highbrow culture. For example, we'll go get some culture, we'll go visit the museum or uh, major sport events or uh, foreign band shows. Um, for the civilian art scene to develop is due to their vibrancy and able to uh, develop their own living space. They're able to thrive in a gray area with flexibility and when you interfere you decide that by uh, revitalizing industrial building that drive up to rent that um and actually let you uh, let them moving out so you only focus on the money amount but at the end you are suck can out there um a discretion the civilian art scene had gradually dwindled. In the end, uh, in my kind of people have speculated what is politically motivated. For example, the opening of the Space Museum, and and since it's where I think um, eight thousand years ago we have first civilization in China was born. Where did that three thousand more years come from? On sports and culture, uh, it seems to care help make a political judgment. The way the government uh, step in, where uh, there is room for the community to develop themselves, I make myself clear. Please return the space to the public. Okay, Mr. Wuxi, why? So this this motion and the government should develop more venues to creating room to support development of local culture, arts, recreation, and sports. Over the past two decades or so, the government had devoted considerable resources to construct uh, venues and facilities. So all note as the Society of Progress. These demands will only grow with time. For example, uh, the, there is a great demand for soccer pitches that will not be fully addressed. There will be also a huge demand for a basketball court. And we're not able to uh, fully address the demand, especially the rush hour. And during the non peak periods, and you can see a lot of uh, empty slots. And so they have a, a policy in place to enhance the usage, for example, allowing the free hiring by or organizations. Despite having so many uh, venues, we still uh, have a problem of shortage that uh, the overall uh, atmosphere, so atmosphere is too weak in Hong Kong. I wonder have government have undertaken any study to understand the cause of this problem. When we were teenagers, uh, there were even a more severe shortage of uh, venues, whether for soccer or basketball. Uh, so we usually just um, uh, tag, tag along or join other people's game. But the vibe was good. Even though uh, with a severe shortage and most of the venues, uh, the usage is maximized. So even um, during at noon during daytime when it was the hottest, that there's still people playing on the soccer field. However, you don't see this nowadays. For the two decades, we're encouraging people to hide in on indoor sport venues to, to enjoy the aircon. I want to say that. Um, and having aircon is wrong since we're moving forward. So a lot of the uh, sport players uh, couldn't stand it anymore and uh, decided that sunlight exposure is too hazardous. 
And yet, uh, please was only meaningful if, if you do it under the sun. So why we have such a weak as uh, sporting atmosphere? I think the government, either intentionally or not, that um, they shift, uh, shift the uh, sport participation into something more formal and regulated and under close monitoring. S doing sports, which is something very natural and spontaneous, and now it required the booking of venues, it's in fact the vibe as well. So shouldn't we go um, go back to the old days where people could just join in the, the other people's game anytime? Unlike um, nowadays that people engage in venue scout touting activities or people queuing up for uh, venue bookings. So um, school venues could be one of the potential source of venues for Back in the days, the school uh, play uh, basketball court and the soccer pitches are shared with the housing estate and could be available for public use after school hours. So during school hours, they'll be reserved for school. So, but after school, they'll uh, become a sports facilities for the housing estate. But nowadays, we have the maintenance and the insurance and the management and safety issues. And we, of using school premiums, especially the S, since the SHA considered venue is the key to improving our uh, sporting atmosphere. How we tap into this kind of resources? Couldn't we talk to the schools? And if you open up facilities after schools, the HAB uh, may be uh, responsible for the maintenance and repairs or bearing. Um, Run under responsibility. That's the one way of using our limited facilities. In terms of facility management, recently our ward officers uh, uh, hope to apply for venues to uh, broadcast uh, World Cup matches. However, the application guide is complicated. So, uh, if an organization is willing to, to uh, hold a uh, soccer watching uh, event in the community level so that we don't have to stay at home. So while watching uh, soccer sport matches, uh, uh, the atmosphere is the key. Otherwise, it would just become some sort of sport being regulated that there's no way that it will thrive. The same thing happened to arts and culture. In the past, we have done a lot of street performances which was much simpler, but now uh, everywhere you can uh, be subject to a lot of constraints. So let, let's let's talk about the pedestrian precincts, even for the LCST venues. Would able to freely allow uh, people to perform performances in the park without a booking venue where people would congregate to watch their performances. So while venue is a problem, however, behind this issue, the underlying uh, question is the cultural thing. So uh, do we have to micromanage everything to uh, Put everything under planning, or we're willing to uh, relax ourselves. So, uh, uh, to, do we have to, to regulate our management approach? So, at the micromanaging, to only allow a designated sports or arts and culture projects will have room to grow. And yet, the overall atmosphere will not improve. Mr. Kim Yun, Mr. President, just now Mr. Kim Yun raised an issue, and we should explore this issue further when it comes to venues. I think 
definitely we need more resources because we definitely don't have sufficient resources to meet the needs of uh, our people in participating in cultural, arts, recreational, and sports activities. So the question is how we can um, optimize the use of venues. And very often when we discuss this issue, we talk about micromanagement and therefore Mr. Wuchiwai was talking about um, overly extensive management or micromanagement and whether it's possible for us to have some liberty over this matter. But of course, it comes with risk. If you relax the regulation, what happens if something goes wrong? So there is an inclination of overmanagement uh, or micromanagement in, the, in society, but we need to reflect and see if this is the best approach because it may increase our cost and it may also cost another kind of wastage. For example, because of the cumbersome application procedures and stringent regulations, for example, insurance would have to be um, taken out. In the end, you may not even can be able to use the venues. So the question is what to manage and how to manage. The other question is what planning do we need, uh, whereas um, for some other venues we can allow community to use it. So on the one hand, we need to consider how to develop new venues. On the other, one important topic for today is how we can make full use of the existing venues so that they don't need to be left idle unnecessarily. We definitely have resource constraints, but we need to tackle the issue of idle but usable premises. So uh, the question is how we can make uh, the best use of our limited space. Well, Chairman, as far as this big debate on land supply is concerned, the focus is on housing. To have quality housing, however, we're not just talking about a roof over our head. We need to have arts and cultural, recreational facilities in the neighborhood so as to build a quality living environment for residents. So in terms of planning, I believe this issue will also be discussed in the big debate. Now, the other point is how we make use of existing venues. Well, I represent the education sector, so inevitably I'll be concerned about the vacant school premises, how we can make, bet, make the best use of vacant school premises for the development of uh, culture, arts, recreation and sports. The government has put in place some measures to facilitate the use of facilities by sports associations to promote sports development. However, the result is uh, limited. One problem is matching. We need to match interested schools uh, against interested sports associations. However, these associations may not be district uh, associations. So what about the needs of residents in the district? Must we only allow NSAs to apply for use of school facilities? These district organizations may not even be sports associations, yet they may occasionally need to use the school premises for other purposes. 
So I think that uh, the scope um, of the arrangement should be widened. There are also problems with the whole mechanism. For example, well, the last administration consulted me, and I understand that uh, insurance should be uh, the problem of insurance should be uh, resolved. Insurance policies are taken out uh, every time. There is an application, but it comes with high administrative cost and the procedure is cumbersome. And it is difficult for um, the schools. So uh, can we ask the government to consider uh, taking um, full coverage insurance uh, in one go so that we can improve the arrangement? The other point is whether we can use Vacant school premises for a variety of activities, uh, arts, recreation, etc. Now, for some vacant school premises, the site area is very small. It is not suitable for housing. It is not suitable for education either because of the um, lack of facilities. But these sites may be suitable for arts and recreation activities. Yet these sites are left idle at the moment. So, like I said, if we um, can optimize the use of vacant and idle school sites and campuses, it would greatly help the development. So this is about the government's effort in increasing the use of vacant school premises and preventing a school site from being left idle for too long. Mr. Jeremy Tam. In Ma Fung, uh, Mr. Ma Fung Kwok's original motion, there is a point on reviewing the policy on industrial buildings and updating the definition of use of industrial buildings. And I'd like to speak on this point. Industrial buildings are crucial to the development of culture and arts and cre creative work. Um, ever since the dwindling of the industrial activities in Hong Kong, Many um, cultural and arts activities uh, take place in industrial buildings because of limited space and limited market in Hong Kong. And low rental in industrial buildings are, uh, in fact, uh, disappearing as well. Many of these industri uh, activities in creative industries stay in old-style industrial buildings. According to the TDC's survey on the demand and situation of uh, use of industrial buildings by artists, over 30 percent of artists uh, undertake creative work in um, industrial buildings, and they become the pre uh, dom pre uh, dominant users in industrial buildings. For example, hidden agenda in the organizer in 2005 assessed that, well, um, in Kun Tong alone, um, there were 500 such uh, bands in industrial buildings, accounting for a quarter of the total number. Many industrial buildings are quite far away from commercial districts or residential neighborhoods. And um, musical performance very often would uh, bring about uh, nuisance and noise problems to the neighborhood, and uh, such as indie music over the past decade or so for the production, performance, and exchange of indie music. Uh, the because of the uh, vibrant activities uh, and ecology is formed. Thereby, more and more bands moved in, um, for example, and they are not confined to uh, performers. There are also uh, technicians for repairing musical instruments, etc., such that the whole area becomes a high value added um, music industry space. Under the existing legislative framework, arts and culture and creative industries are allowed to use industrial buildings. However, there is no channel for the publication and exchange of um, ideas because there is no policy that allows uh, public uh, uh, license to be uh, 
granted in an industrial building. And first of all, an application will have to be made with the town planning board to uh, amend the column two uses. And the short term waiver will have to be applied with the land department with a hefty annual fee paid for per performing artists. Well, no landlord would do so much for a tenant. Although the rent received may be higher, the uh, money go, goes back to the government. So what is the point of helping the tenants? Now, if um, we don't go through this procedure, the, uh, um, the an encumbrance may be uh, added to the tenancy uh, or the lease, uh, such that in the end, the landlord would just drive away the tenant. Well, uh, in Kun Tong, what in the example mentioned above, uh, the ban moved a number of times, but at the end of last year, because of failure of meeting requirements, in the end uh, it closed down. And the uh, in the early years of the revitalization of in, of industrial buildings policy, uh, there was a blunder. Um, after conversion, these industrial buildings become became very valuable, and many consortia then proceeded uh, to um, mine up uh, industrial buildings, such that there is no more room left for the artists. In fact, um, those in the art, uh, culture, culture, uh, music industries are those who cannot afford high rent. And with different means of oppression, if they do not uh, tap different sources of income, they cannot afford the rent at all. I therefore have put forward my proposal and we discussed with the Development Bureau a number of times. Of course, we need to um, give priority to preventing fire hazards. This is beyond dispute. For the lowest, lowest three floors of industrial buildings, they can be open for use. Uh, you can stipulate that uh, for one of the floors, the main use would be to give performances, and the, the remaining two floors, they can generate, um, they can have commercial activities to generate income, and they can still fulfill the definition of use of industrial buildings. And very often, the performances take place during weekends or in the evening hours, uh, quite contrary to the normal business hours of industrial buildings. So, this will minimize the nuisance cost to the neighborhood. And you can also leverage on the existing transport network without um, providing uh, extra. So musical performances can really make use of the quiet industrial area in the evening um, so that you bring vibrancy and revitalize the industrial buildings and build a nighttime economy for the whole area. In the election manifesto, Carrie Lam has said that she would uh, study the proposal of relaxing the restrictions on the lower floors of industrial buildings so that they can be used for by the creative industries without compromising fire hazard um, fire safety. Well, I understand that uh, towards the end of the year, the government will be putting forward a proposal and um, culture and arts performance uh, is uh, really popular. I hope that uh, the government would heed the views of the community and uh, appreciate their creativity. Otherwise, without policy support, there will not be any legitimate and lawful means to uh, express uh, the, themselves. Dr. Kwokaki, President, we have two secretaries represented here. And this is um, a motion raised uh, by uh, Mr. Ma Fung Kwok uh, from the um, arts and culture sector. Over the past 10 years, I think the um, disaster was um, the revitalization of industrial buildings proposed uh, by the then Secretary for Development, Mrs. Carrie Lam. Because of the Highland policy, because of um, the erroneous policies, the industrial buildings uh, became a very good alternative. And for those um, owning the entire industrial block, um, they have a lot of money um, to make investment 
In fact, just this has uh, become um, the geese and the lady golden eggs. So in Fortan, um, Guntong, Kowloon East, all these industrial buildings have been turned into grade A uh, buildings. The rent has been uh, on the way up from ten dollars to forty, fifty dollars. There are so many uh, small time studios now, photo stu photography studios um, that um, are obliterated from these uh, buildings. It's more even more interesting for these to be moved by uh, Mr. Ma Hong Kwok. As we all know, uh, Mr. Ma has been sitting on boards um, that, that disperse uh, funding, the Film Development Fund, the Arts um, Council, and so on. Art and culture, uh, to a layman like me, is uh, not something uh, we I, I would understand. Tolstoy uh, said uh, when it was um, 70s, that art is uh, something that that enable uh, exchange of uh, emotions and culture um, in old days um, the system the history um, and and art I mean all these added together enable people to to engage in communication. In Hong Kong, starting uh, from the 19th century, we have seen um, the changes. Now we've um, seen um, policies um, that are trying to obliterate um, Cantonese. Hong Kong uh, used to be um, the Hollywood um, in the Orient. And nowadays, uh, we have to make a production um, that have um, the involvement of uh, the mainland stars. And the topics are very interesting. Uh, hardly ever would they talk about um, the current affairs, and they would talk about um, the um, um, the imperial uh, court um, uh, machinations and so on. And all, all these um, have become embedded in the Hong Kong culture. Now you may say that um, look, we are looking, we're talking about venues, but that's the most important thing. Any art and culture, for for any art and culture to survive, you need to have uh, space for creation. You need to have uh, space for them to survive in. Mister Marvin Kwok and his cohorts uh, might say that um, they are talking about conventional art and culture. We don't have venues. We can ask the LCSD, and the LCSD um, would um, vet the productions. That there was a, a show that um, was listed as a production of from the National um, University in Taiwan. That they got into trouble. Now some said even if you graduated from Taiwan, you shouldn't mention um, your your title. There are so many that have been obliterated. We're left with um, the um, all these boards. If you want money, if you if you want wet venues, uh, then you have to um, go begging uh, for them, cap in hand. When it when it comes to a uh, space uh, in Hong Kong, I can think of a number of uh, names: uh, Anthony Wong, uh, um, Anthony Wong, and Denise uh, Ho. They have um, defied um, the the um, royal decree, as it were. They're saying something that um, people don't really want to hear. I think values have become a very good, very effective tool. They are using this as a tool to manipulate um, the availability of from um, the venues. We have the WKCD. You know, it is um, all these are manipulated in the hands of these few people. If you're not considered politically correct and uh, you, you don't you can't imagine to be able to survive here. Mr Sip
It's not here. We have um, the last remaining um, space, like the schools and the community. They they are opening up um, the schools um, for cultural activities and and this would subject to layers of um, vetting. And if uh, you're not politically correct, then you would end up um, with uh, the same fate. So if you want Hong Kong to have our own culture, uh, then the black hands should steer clear of them. They should be given some room for survival. All they need is some space for survival. They would be able to survive organically. Mr. Felix Chung, President. Now here we are talking about the development of uh, culture, arts, recreation, and sports. Now a venue would make a world of difference because without uh, venues, um, there would be no practice, there would be no training to speak of. The other important ingredient is um, the atmosphere in society. That these uh, would go hand in hand with the development of um, art, sports, and than recreation. The young people may, may be engaged in uh, ball games and swimming. This is um, good for health. And in our society, we're all advocating um, good exercise to maintain our physical well-being. But other than uh, physical well-being, uh, this can become a career. This can become an industry in overseas jurisdictions. If you look at the World Cup, um, some of these players uh, can fetch um, millions and millions of dollars in annual pay. So sports um, doesn't don't, don't really um, have to be just for physical exercise. It can it can be um, a lifelong career. But in Hong Kong, the parents uh, would just encourage um, their kids to to dabble in sports, and the ultimate path uh, would be to become a professional before they can. Um, keep a family together. There are so many successful athletes or, or sportsmen, um, San San Li, Wong Kam Bo, wins for windsurfing and, and cycling uh, respectively, and also uh, Sara Lee um, and um, Ngon Yi and uh, Chen Chi Ching for golf and um, snooker. And they spend their own time to improve themselves to such an extent that they become um, well famous. I'm sure that a lot of them didn't enjoy any government subsidy. They didn't enjoy any government training. Sarah Lee well, uh, did enjoy some of the training, but not um, the others. In absence of uh, resources, why is it that Hong Kong can produce um, well, great, uh, well, famous um, athletes. It shows that Hong Kong does have a pool of talents who are committed, who are determined to excel in their sporting careers. So today is not enough for us to merely talk about venues. We have to look at um, the cultural policy and sports policy holistically. There are many young people who are very creative, but would they survive financially? If they can't survive financially, and they would go back to um, jobs and that can sustain them financially. So many young people feel really frustrated about this because it's all about um, financial uh, well-being. Now we said that uh, we are relying on um, finance, professional services. The, it is a very narrow base and we should uh, have better diversification for young people to to be able to excel in their pursuits. I think we have to rely on government policies. How do we promote um, creative industry and sports and allow them to turn 
these um, interests into a lifelong career, because it then they don't have to worry about um, their life when they have um, outlived um, their sporting career. Can they have further development uh, post um, sports career? So I hope that the SAR government um, should consider, other than the availability of venues, the policies regarding culture and sports, uh, so the young people will have alternative route and pathway uh, for the way forward. In developing venues in space, I can think of a good example. In January, the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development announced that in Samshui Po, um, together with the URA, they um, have a design and fashion base in Samshui Po. This is a URA project. They've set aside um, tens of thousands of um, square feet uh, for the development of um, fashion and so on for the others sports and and culture i think they can take advantage of um, the opportunity to cooperate with the ura to um designate uh, spaces and um, maybe um tens of thousands of feet in terms of floor space and that would be a good example for different industries to have some room for further development. It doesn't cost an awful lot of money. If you can focus on um, a particular area of development. Thank you. Mr. Junius Ho, I'd like to thank Mr. Ma Fong Kwok for moving the motion to develop venues and creating room to support the development of local culture, arts, creation and sports. I'm particularly in favor of number five of the motion and that is opening up school facilities for promotion of sports development scheme. At present, we have over a thousand secondary and primary schools in Hong Kong. Most of the time, their playground their uh, halls have not been put to maximum use, and especially on weekends. We understand that sometimes the schools carry out activities, but apart from that, apart from their own cultural and arts activities, students' activities, or the uniformed groups' drills, about 50 to 60 percent of the schools um, are totally vacated on weekends, and we should make better use of them. Old groups registered under Section 88 of the IRO or those registered with the HA Bureau should be allowed to make use of the space, say, if They are arts and sports groups of this type. We should allow them to use school premises as a priority. Um, at present, in terms of school halls, if air conditioning has to be turned on, meaning there is the spending on electricity and water, and also, people have talked about insurance coverage. Now, we don't want the expenses to be shouldered by the sponsoring body or the schools because other people would be using their premises. However, the risks are on them and the bill is on them. It is not fair, but we have different funds under the HAB. I'm sure there are funds that can be applied for in order to allow these eligible groups to use school premises and uh, without asking them to pay 
I believe the relevant expenditure would be very minor. We, therefore, should make the best use of existing facilities. Now, other people have talked about getting more land and adding to facilities. All that is very good, but it takes time. At this council, very often, the administration needs to seek funding after doing its own study, and it takes a long time. Talking about culture, arts, and sports policies, we have reviewed that many times. And very often, we may have a consensus, but um, a journey of a thousand miles has to start with the first step. And if we can put these 1,000 schools to use on weekends, that would be the most practical way to go forward. I therefore am in particularly uh, in favor of point five in Mr. Ma Fung Kwok's motion, which is very positive. Because compared to other initiatives, this is the easiest one, and we go for the easier ones first. We should do what can be done right away because we have the policy, we have the resources, and there is not a lot of technical uh, barrier. So, President, just do it. We should not worry too much. Thank you, President. That's all. Thank you. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Paul Chair. Thank you, President. I believe Mr. Ma Fung Kwok's original uh, intent is about venues and creating um, physical room. And I don't think he is really talking about policies. But if I look at the amendments, many other members also talk about the promotion of arts and sports. Because of time constraint, I'd like to speak on my res observations on the original motion. Just now, Dr. K. K. Kwok, as he always is. Um, he will relate all neutral issues to conflict between the mainland and Hong Kong and talk about black hands, and I don't think I need to retort him. Mr. Felix Chung talked about policies. Of course, I can understand uh, we should promote sports. In this motion debate, and I think we need a debate of a broader scale, because given Hong Kong's geographical situation, all these policies and measures are closely linked uh, to another bigger policy, and there may be a conflict with that, and I'm talking about land policy. Members, we're talking about public housing, and I understand the difficulty. Well, we need recreational facilities, but we must also have regard for um, commercial and industrial land, and also about the private recreational leases. Not many colleagues gave that some consideration. And how should that be taken forward? Where can we strike a balance? President, let me talk about Kowloon East, uh, which I know r rather well. and. Uh, the cruise terminal. Uh, there was this uh, amendment about putting the cruise terminal to better use. I would call it the Siberia of Hong Kong because it's lying in waste. With regard to the calls by uh, cruises, I think uh, it's drawn up in quite a good way, but I'm sure it can be used more for sports and recreation. Also, next to the cruise terminal, there is a big lawn which is basking in the sun. My colleagues were there to think about uh, how it should be used. We took in the scenery. We were trying to lie down a bit on the lawn, but we were chased out. So it is lying in waste. 
Also, let me talk about the Hong Kong Stadium. The noise problem has precluded the um, holding of large concerts. In 1994, it was Alan Tam, and then 13 years later, it was Sam Hoi, but still, um, the noise level was a concern. I think that's quite unfortunate. At the cruise terminal, it is very much away from residential units, and there is a big space. Before we have Kai Tag Sports Complex, we should use the cruise terminal and the lawn next to it for sports and other activities. Well, not too long ago, we were talking about Morton Terrace. If you want to create more space, why is it that some opposition camp members cited unreasonable reasons to stop that activity? I'm a member from Wan Chai, and I am concerned about the barring of that activity. It was said that it was substandard. I can see that uh, one amendment talks about the Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines. I understand and I agree, but there are exceptions. If you want to make the best use of every site, you can't always apply hard and fast standards. Well, you say there should be more transparency, but uh, that is an aside. And also, it is said that Caroline Hill must be a better venue. But you must remember, Ng Kam Chun, the chairman of Wang Chai District Council, said that this was a, a more decent center, and that is in Leighton Center, and it took 11 years to materialize. And Caroline Hill hasn't even got started. And the administration is thinking of uh, turning it into a court or something instead of providing space just for different activities. And from now to materialization, I'm sure it will take at least 11 years for Caroline Hill to be turned into something. I hope you will not, on the one hand, applaud the increase in venues, but on the other, when we ask the administration to improve the Morton Terrace site, um, you said no. The intent is for the District Council to take the initiative to plan for projects that would give play to the characteristics of the district instead of just welfare, medical, and the average use. We were trying to allow the District Council to play a bigger role, but you have stood in the way. The Jockey Club is providing $40 million for the project. When the project comes back to the Council, I hope you will walk the walk. Hong Kong has gone a long way. Just now, Mr. Wu Chuai said when he was small, he had to queue up to use a soccer pitch. I remember when I was small, uh, we had to kick a, a plastic soccer ball. Um, crammed into a very small space. But I hope uh, we can do a good job and strike a balance given our geographical situation. Mr. Andrew Xu. First, uh, thank for, to uh, Mr. Ma Fung Kwok's original motion on the developing venues and creating room to support development of local arts, culture, recreation, and sports. On uh, sports recreation and sports development, it required a land to develop the venues or we'll probably uh, preserve it with a better term. For the uh, family golf club, um, so now that we, government even considering the golf course uh, for housing development, so how do we balance the housing needs of the public and while um, maintaining uh, venues for recreation and golf? Is a, a sport uh, regarded as important by the Hong Kong public. For this grand debate on land, I hope that Development Bureau um, could uh, think from the uh, sport enthusiast point of view. And for the culture, the Wong Kok pedestrian pristine, and the uh, Yao Mong District Council uh, have abolished the arrangement. So 
we have a, a lot of people performing in the precinct. So demonstrate the local culture uh, uh, is fine, but um, how, how do we? Um, what is the role of the government? Is important for the uh, Cosby Town Square is also uh, um, somebody singing in the public space. It's only just uh, one single performer, and the less noise generated for the Mongkok. It's such a long stretch of precinct, and while they're so tightly packed, there's no government departments um, managing. But at the end, it turned to something unfavorable. Speaking of local culture, the borough will need some more participation and implement actual policies beside the venue. How do they? Um, Accommodate them. That's all I would like to say, Mr. Ho Kai Ming. Arts and creative industry is the most most vibrant sector of economy. It would effectively uh, promote employment opportunities. According to the Census Department, the arts and culture sector and GDP from to 2015 have been growing at the rate of 7.6%. It's about two percent higher than other sectors in the arts and culture industries uh, employment. For two point two percent per year, and uh, higher than the general growth in one point three percent per year, you can see there's a great potential for the sector. According to the Lands Department, in twenty twenty over a one million square feet of idle industry food space, and the uh, industrial buildings are a lower rent, and uh, these settings are favorable to arts and culture sector. Since we have it's such a mismatch of uh, supply and balance. So why don't we take advantage of the industrial space to promote our uh, diversified culture? In hope the departments can uh, re-examine uh, the role of industrial buildings in uh, in such a development. Recently, a lot of the uh, uh, artisan uh, plans to convert the uh, industrial building into uh, band rooms and rehearsal rooms, where they meet a lot of. Um, obstacles because um, the uh, land titles of the industrial building and the structures still remain in the industrial age and yet to be refreshed, thus limiting their usage. At the same time, the fire safety of this building is a concern, especially the 1100 pre 1980s building have yet to met the prevailing fire safety standards, reducing uh, their potential. And the revitalization scheme concluded in 2016 have uh, transformed the ecosystem of tenants. That a lot of the uh, uh, culture, uh, arts culture factor is forced to relocate it elsewhere, which have been kind of productive to his aim and reducing their uh, room for survival. If the administration helped to promote a uh, cultural and creative industry, the first they would need to enhance the living space for them so that they would be able to have enough room to unleash their potential. The administration to examine the. Uh, Policy on industrial building is to refresh the definition of industrial use, and which uh, perf uh, the per uh, performance and uh, arts industry use would be regarded as every permitted use, so that the uh, without compromising fire safety, these organizations can rent industrial buildings and to um, prepare the groundwork for future development. The government should be proactive and lead by example. To promote the local uh, culture art scene to allow land to emulate to enhance our competitive advantage. For example, uh, preserving older style government buildings, for example, the uh, Yip On Industrial Building as acquired on industrial buildings, and attracting uh, music and handicrafts and fashion as a, 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 a priority tenants to become an art scene. Uh, a cultural park we leased out in fixed tenancy terms. The industrial building are high stories away from residents and affordable, which are quite suitable for the arts and culture sector um, businesses. Uh, so, so, of the government can uh, consider the suggestion and um, reducing the obstacles so that the industrial buildings will become an incubator for the creative industries. I so submit. Any other members would like to speak? Mr. Ma Fung you may not speak on the amendments. The time limit is five minutes. Mr. President, first of all, I thank the four members for moving amendments to my motion. I believe that these amendments are in line, in principle, with my original motion. In terms of increasing space for the development of 
local culture, arts, recreation, and sports. They are consistent, and I support them. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, regarding the facilities provided by the government, at the moment they are not up to standard. And uh, with increasing population, our facilities are lagging behind. So my first suggestion is to build more venues and facilities, so as to keep ourselves in line with the relevant standards. The last review of the Hong Kong PSG was 1998. We should consider the demographic changes and different demands in the community and changes in the demand for cultural venues and sports facilities. It's a, it is necessary to conduct an analysis on the demand for these facilities before a review. Mr. Lau Kwok Fan mentioned that um, the 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 procedure for approving applications for using venues and facilities should be expedited. But this just doesn't just relate to um, cultural venues and sports facilities. Uh, it uh, also refers to other. Uh, uh, application procedures is uh, really at snail's pace. Very often, an application or funding application will not be floated until 10 years of the pipeline. In terms of using vacant premises and idle sites, well, if the government could heed Mrs. Regina Ip's suggestion uh, by opening up uh, spaces in public facilities with low usage, such as Kaitek Cruise Terminal, it would very much be welcome. Mr. Aulok Him again uh, suggests that, that the procedure should be expedited. It is also consistent with my original motion. Ms. Tanya Chen suggests that the government should uh, expeditiously construct the outstanding facilities in the remaining batch of three cultural facilities. But again, there should not uh, there should be there should be no frail facilities, there should be no delay and the quality should not be compromised. So again her suggestion is in line with my thoughts and I agree with her. Regarding batch three facilities uh, be it the CG Center or the um, or other performance venues. This is very much needed by the uh, sector. The WKCD should construct the remaining facilities as soon as possible. Mr. Ed Mr. Edward Lau also uh, suggests revising the policy on private recreational leases, including uh, increasing the opening hours of facilities for public participation. I uh, strongly support that as well. The government is, in fact, Conducting a relevant review to improve the um, or, or to optimize the use of these uh, sites under the PRL, and in fact, uh, these sites are by and large subsidized and supported by the government. Uh, the membership threshold should be lowered. There should be more sessions available for the public, and I think that all these are only reasonable in the review process. I hope the government would. Um, reserve space for private clubs development. Policy change should not lead to um, lesser room for sports clubs or facilities to develop. I have been in touch with a lot of private clubs such as the yard club, the cricket club, um, soccer club and the golf clubs. And in the past they have been uh, Key player, key players in promoting sports in Hong Kong. In terms of promoting pop popular sports and elite sports, they have really played a crucial role. I hope that the government will continue to support them. Um, for these private clubs and associations uh, around the world, very often private clubs and associations contribute significantly to the development of sports. So I think we should continue to give our support. I also submit, Mr. President. Okay. Secretary for Home Affairs. President, once again, my thanks to all the members for the invaluable views. The government has been paying attention to the expectations of um, the sectors uh, for venues. We've done a lot of work in this regard. And in fact, um, the venues are the important pillars uh, for the arts and cultural groups, uh, but uh, because of the high rental, um, they they are finding it difficult to um, get on with um, the business. And we have increased um, the funding for the ADC by 30% to support the medium and me small and medium-sized um, 
asked groups. The government is also looking at the possibility of releasing the potential of industrial buildings. The HAB has been liaising with uh, different departments uh, and the Development Bureau to incorporate um, the arts and culture uses, as always permitted, uses industrial building. As of uh, May 2018, the Town Planning Board has received um, amended uh, 20 amended OZPs and for arts and culture um, that um, do not involve direct provision of goods and services, they would be incorporated as always permitted uses. The, um, this industry has uh, produced um, economic benefits to Hong Kong. We'll uh, make sure that um, the facilities will be available um, to the outsiders. We are conducting a review on the PR PRL, the private recreational lease, with a view to opening up um, the facilities more. As regards the opening up of schools, um, this has already started. And this year we have adjusted um, the financial support uh, and the um, fee paying uh, users. Uh, we hope that more users uh, will be able to take advantage of this. As regards the Kai Tak um, Sports Park, uh, we have the 50,000 seating capacity venue and we also have um, the venue available for concerts and this uh, will get underway by the end of the year, hopefully. We cannot lose sight of uh, the possibility outside Hong Kong. We have in, um, provided uh, $50 million recurrent expenditure for arts groups and artists to stage performances and showcase um, the, the artwork outside Hong Kong. Last year, the Arts groups uh, from Hong Kong have been to uh, 60 cities and got in touch with um, 100,000 um, audience and they've become ambassadors from Hong Kong. I'm sure that our commitment and um, devotion will enable um, more opportunities to be made available to Hong Kong artists and bring uh, the essence of Hong Kong culture uh, to the rest of the world. We've also, uh, the Bay Area introduced uh, Hong Kong's culture and helped the local arts groups to stage performances there. Recently, we have um, arranged for representatives of um, cultural organizations to take part in a forum in Shenzhen, and we brought together the performing venues, operators, and Hong Kong groups and explored the possibility of cooperation. These, um, has achieved uh, pretty good results. Within two months of the, the budget being announced, there are 10 projects um, that will be staged in uh, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Foshan, and Dongguan. We will take stock of our experience and arrange for more of the same going forward. Finally, for new facilities and projects, other than um, having regard to the Hong Kong planning standard and guidelines, we would also look at other factors in order to satisfy the public demand for these venues. We have um, retained uh, consultants to have a look at the sports facilities and explore the possibilities of uh, revising the HKPSG. And the consultant will be collecting and collating views uh, from the sporting sector the, the district councils and the members of the public. The government has been supporting um, the recreational and uh, sporting organizations, and we will identify more land uh, so that we can um, have full development in both areas in order to give people a better life. Secretary for Development. Thank you, President. Thank you for members' speeches. With regard to the planning for spaces, the Development Bureau and other departments will act according to 
the relevant policies and adjust relevant planning standards as the need arises. In terms of planning for recreational and sports facilities, as Mr. Lau was saying, actually the HAB has consulted commissioned a consultant to do a relevant study to see how the Hong Kong PSG can be amended in order to take care of needs in the future. In terms of long-term strategic planning, the planning department started the 2030 plus study in order to establish the idea of uh, having new ideas for making use of public space and it is one of the ways to enhance Hong Kong's livability. In fact, in the 2030 plus, it is said that the Hong Kong PSG per capita open space should be enhanced to 2 square meters to not less than 2.5 square meters. It also advocates um, the application of higher per capita GIC space, meaning 3.5 square meters per person. This should be the basis for future strategic planning. The administration will be looking at uh, implementing these measures in long-term planning. Some members mentioned the work of the Task Force on Land Supply. Indeed, we need to have comprehensive planning and we have to consider the needs in society, housing being one of them, but there are other um, needs and uh, needs for facilities and we cannot just look at one of those. In terms of GIC size, um, open space and also transport facilities, the Task Force has seen that in future we lack at least 1,200 hectares and at least 720 hectares should be devoted to the users I mentioned. And therefore, uh, this will take up 60% of the 1,200 hectares. And uh, we are talking about ancillary facilities and is not just housing. Some members mentioned whether in the lease conditions we should state that the developers must reserve space for culture and arts. As I said in my opening speech, there is already a mechan mechanism to provide for this, and we are already doing it in certain cases. But in terms of integrated design and making the best use of land, we must have regard for the actual situation in the market, and we must reserve enough flexibility so the market can make adjustments in a flexible manner. We therefore don't think we should go for a broad brush and uh, approach using hard and fast rules to regulate the development of private sites. In terms of making use of vacant land and schools, with regard to land that can be used for public hiring, the LD has already uploaded the relevant information to the geographical information map of their website. This can be accessed by the public at any time. As to streamlining the hiring procedure, the Lands Department will be very happy to listen to views of stakeholders and streamline the relevant procedures. As I said in the 2018-19 budget, $1 billion has been set aside to help NGOs make the best use of vacant government land and school premises for non-profit community uses. The Development Bureau is uh, making uh, preparation for the details, and I won't repeat uh, what I said at my opening speech. As for using other vacant government land, we are making very flexible use of them. Say, for example, um, at the fly the flyover operation underneath the Kuntong Bypass, um, the energizing East Kowloon office is turning this hoarded up space into um, creative arts and cultural. Uh, space and all three venues have seen the conduct of 370 different activities, um, allowing more than 260,000 people to participate. And some people have mentioned the land next to the cruise terminal, and this is now going through a town planning procedure. The town planning board has endorsed the relevant OZP earlier on. The administration will um, seek to implement the long term developments. And in the short term, the end Energizing East Kowloon office will be selecting NGOs to conduct weekend bazaars in the piece of land next to the cruise terminal. There can be thematic arts and recreational um, activities and events. Many members mentioned industrial buildings. I'd like to point out that in terms of land lease, industrial buildings usually stipulate that the relevant size can only be used for industrial or go-down um, uses. And in the cases in common law jurisdictions have 
given play to the interpretation of industrial and the lands department as party to the land lease cannot unilaterally change the lease conditions and also allow activities that uh, fly against the land lease and also the cases in common law jurisdictions. However, it is said that the coverage of industrial and go down use can be expanded and we have emphasized that um, of course there are constraints. Say for example in terms of industrial use, we cannot pro probably interpret it to include entertainment. And as I said in my opening speech, the town planning board has acted again according to needs and planning standards. Um, it has already expanded the always permitted uses in industrial sites. Some members also mentioned that we should extend the exemption certificates so that um, industrial buildings can be used for arts and culture. I'd like to point out that the main purpose of the exemption certificate is to relax the conditions of land leases so that non-industrial uses stated in the lease can be uh, can take place in industrial buildings. But then the premise is it must comply with planning fire surface and building surface regulations. And we are talking to relevant bureaus in order to uh, look into the possible expansion of exemption certificates so that we can uh, support the conduct of activities by these organizations. And we'll report progress when there is progress. Some members concentrated on fire safety. I'd like to emphasize that indeed fire safety is important. Therefore, the relevant bureaus and departments are doing very cautious assessment. We hope that uh, we can strike a balance between the needs of arts and culture groups and also fire safety and public safety. All in all, um, considering fire safety, we believe the measures that can be relaxed should not in include high-risk activities, including crowds. We will uh, liaise with HAB, a Security Bureau, and also the FSD to consider these proposals. As I said in my opening, we are looking into the provision of incentives to encourage owners to redevelop or convert the entire industrial building so that after this is done, there can be certain floor area for um, emerging uh, industries with great potential, including creative industries. We believe uh, we will be able to complete the review in a short while and we'll be able to make available proposals for the community's discussion. Here, I'd like to thank again Mr. Mafon Kwok for the motion and the amendments by the four members and also members' speeches. The Development Bureau, together with other policy bureaus, will continue to make the best use of space in order to support local arts and culture development. Thank you. I now call upon Mrs. Virginia Ip to move an amendment. Mr. President, I move that um, Mr. Marvin Kwok's motion be amended in my name. I propose a question to you, and that is that the amendment moved up by Mrs. Virginia Ip be passed. And I put the question to you as stated. Uh, Mrs. Virginia claims a division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
开始表决。Voting begins。马美娟议员，你是 Miss Alice Mike， are you going to vote？ 请核对所作。Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The result is displayed. From functional constituencies, 28 present, 27 for. From geographical constituencies, 26 present, 24 for. Two abstentions. The question is agreed by majority of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Ms. Sarah Lee,、uh, Mr. President, I move that. Uh, in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting, we spent back to developing venues and creating room to support the development of local culture, arts, recreation, and sports. This council shall proceed forthwith to the division after the bell has rung for one minute. And I propose a question to you: that is, that the motion moved by Ms. Sari Lee be passed. Will those in favour please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by the two groups of members who are present. I. Declare the、uh, motion passed. I order that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting, meeting in re in respect of developing venues and creating room to support the development of local culture, arts, recreation, and sports, this council shall pr proceed forthwith to the division after the bell has been rung for one minute. Miss Tanya Chen, as Mrs. Regina Ipsy amendment has been passed, you may move your、uh, revised amendment. Mr. President, I move. That Mr. Mahon Kwok's motion, as amended by Mrs. Regina Ip, be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose the question to you that the revised amendment moved by Ms. Tanya Chan be passed. And I put the question to you as stated. Ms. Tanya Chan claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. From functional constituencies, twenty-eight percent, twenty-seven four. From geographical constituencies, twenty-six percent, twenty-five four. One abstention. The question is agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negative. Ah,、uh, uh, passed. Mr. Lau Kuo Fan, as the amendment of Mrs. Regina Ip and Ms. Tanya Chan have been passed, you may move the revised amendment. Mr. President, I move that Mr. Ma Kong Fox's motion be amended by Mrs. Regina Ip, Ms. Tanya Chan be further amended by my revised amendment. And I propose a question to you that the revised amendment moved by Ms. Lau Kuo Fan be passed. Ms. Tanya Chan claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. 
。請核對所有表決。Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions,、um, cl voting is closed. The results are displayed. From FC 28 present, 19. Uh, four, one against, seven abstentions. From GCs, twenty-seven present, fourteen for, five against, eight abstentions. The question is agreed by the majority of members. Two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Alokim has the amendments of Mr. Sujin, Ms. Tanya Chan, and Mr. Wafan have been passed. You may move your revised amendment, Mr. President. I move. That Mr. Marvin Kwok's motion, as amended by Mrs. Regina Ip, Ms. Tanya Chen, Mr. Lau Kwok Fan, be further amended by my revised amendment. I would like to take some time to、um, urge members to support. You cannot say something like that. You can only read from the script. And I propose to question to you that the revised amendment moved by Mr. Lau Kwok be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise your hands? Ms. Gary Chan claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. From functional constituencies, 28 present, 13 for, 2 against, 2,、uh, 12 abstentions. From GCs, 26 present, 13 for, none against, 13 abstentions. The question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the, mo the amendment negative. Mr. Malcolm Kwok, you have two minutes, two seconds to reply. Then the debate will come to a close. Mr. Malcolm Kwok, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to thank. Thirty members, including members who have moved amendments to my motion, for expressing their views and speaking on the subject. And a majority of members who have spoken are in support of my original motion. So we have a consensus in preparing for this motion debate. I、uh, consulted the sector and I did some research. And after consolidating the views, I have reflected their views、um, and brought in their views in the,、uh, into this chamber. Mr. Lau Kongwa, in his reply,、um, talked about the government's commitment in the in the uh, in the uh, previous in the past few years. Basically, I agree with him. However, I do agree with other members who have spoken today that、uh, the government needs to do more because there is still keen demand and、uh, there are.、Um, There are a lot of economic benefits,、um, and this cannot be satisfied solely by the、uh, Kaitech Sports Complex and the WKCD. And、uh, housing doesn't trump everything. Development of arts, culture, sports is equally important, and we need space for that. I'd like to propose to the government that, in terms of the industrial building policies and use of vacant school premises and opening up school facilities for The use of sports,、uh, we can very expeditiously make improvements.、Um, I hope that、uh, the government would、um, seriously consider making an extra effort to、uh, promote the、uh, development. I now propose a question to you, and that is that a motion moved by Mr. Ma Fung Kwok as amended by Mrs. Regina Ip, Mr. Tanya Chen, and Mr. Lau Kwok Fan be passed. Mr. Lau Kwok Fan, point of order, Mr. President. Just now, when I moved my amendment, I had wanted to use the three minutes to explain my amendment. Why is it that you objected to my speaking? I had not even started. You just have to say something to appeal to members to support. No, I was trying to go into the justifications. You can only speak on the wording of amendment. The secretariat just. 
called my office to say that I had three minutes. You would have three minutes just to speak on the wording of、uh, your motion. I was cut off after the first line. Do you understand the rules of procedure? Well, I know the rules of procedure. I only finished my first sentence. I had not even started to say why I moved my amendment. This was totally unreasonable. You sit down. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Mr. Aung Nak Hin claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute. Will members please proceed to vote? Will members please check your votes? If there are no questions, voting shall now stop and the results are displayed. From FCs, 28 present, 19 for, eight abstentions. From GCs, 26 present, 13 for, 13 abstentions. The question is not agreed. By a majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members present, I declare the motion negatived. I now adjourn the council until the 27th of June, 2018, a Wednesday at 11 a.m.